Starboard side. Oh, God. There really is a last frontier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. The whole goal in coming here was really to fish for the halibut and rockfish. Holy smokes, I thought that thing was gonna break the rod. They'll get up to 400 pounds or more. I always wanted to catch halibut. I've never caught anything that even closely resembles one. Got a leader. Color. It's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Real big one. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in the Just world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz. I got you. What you saying? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the three on the pound tuna. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to see. That's the one. He's not superstitious because that's bad luck. Woo! All right, get with him. Come with him. We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fish. I like to fish, I like to travel, I like to hunt, and I've been to a lot of different places, but there's one place that just stands above them all. The size, the scope, just the breadth of everything, there really is a last frontier, and that's here. Everywhere you look, there's a bald eagle there, there's a giant waterfall, all that empty space that there's so few places on Earth left where you really see that. Before coming to Alaska, you know, I had a lot of time to think about what it was gonna be like, the scenery and, you know, just the terrain. Coming from Key West, which is probably the flattest rock you could possibly come from, to the most rugged mountainous terrain in the continental United States. Once you get here and see everything, start taking it all in, it really is breathtaking. This is, I think, my fourth or fifth trip up here. Good morning, guys. Here they are. How you doing? Long I'm Nick. Time no see. Nice Rush. to meet you, man. Andy, nice you, to meet man? you. How's it going, man? How are you? Welcome Good. to the Voyager. Every time this place has not disappointed us. I heard you got some halibut that you need exterminated. Uh, we're gonna try, I think so. Cool. I think so, weather looks good. So I met a very weird dude by the name of Andy Mesereau. It's been almost 15 years now. How's salmon fishing? Good. Yeah. Some big ones. Really? He came on Bloody Decks. We had a mutual friend. So we kind of hit it off pretty quick. He's just, he's as Alaska as they come. He's been here for 25 years, little weird and a lot of fun. All right, let's get out of here. Yep. Right on, let's go. Cool. The whole goal in coming here was really to fish for the halibut and rockfish. We're here in Seward's located on the North Gulf Coast of Alaska. And basically we're situated halfway between Homer and Prince William Sound. So we're kind of along this really stern rock bound coast where we get uh, water that comes in and out of Cook Inlet on one end and in and out of Prince William Sound on the other. And it all sort of mixes into like a biological soup here where there's just an incredible amount of life and bait in the water in this area. And we can go in either direction to get further into that soup and further into the fishing. And the closer we get, the better the fishing is. All right, so what's the plan, Andy? So yeah. what the deal is at this spot is there's a lot of bycatch, a lot of rockfish. And so the ideal situation is to put over a bunch of different baits, right? And one of the baits would be a filleted carcass of a rockfish. It's hard for the rockfish to eat that, but it's perfect for a big halibut. So we want to at least soak one of those along with the usual baits that Nick's prepared. The bigger bait, big fish theory. Um, there's so much life down there that um, we're just gonna, if we put small baits down there, we're gonna be inundated with, with smaller fish. Okay. And so, fish are great to eat. They're great they are, fish, but they're wrong. not really the target. The target right? Yeah, so yeah. no herring here. It's gonna be the bigger carcasses. Or uh, once the things fish. get rolling, we'll probably- Will start... the halibut push them out? Like once they uh, get onto That's typically our... what happens. Okay. You get a fairly active bite of rockfish, and then as the tide starts to roll, we're kind of here at slack tide right now. Once the tide starts to roll in, uh, the rockfish bite kind of dies, and that's when typically we start to see some, some halibut showing up. When you're halibut fishing, of course you're bottom fishing. And you know, we love to bottom fish, Rush and I both. The bottom fishing here, of course, has a lot greater rewards than in San Diego. You know, in San Diego, I'm catching four and five pound cod. Up here, you're catching halibut from, you know, 10 to 300 pounds potentially. And then you've got these other characters that are gonna pile on along the way. <laughs> well, I'm good at catching little fish. There you go. So the North Gulf Coast, Gulf of Alaska is one of the most productive ecosystems in the world. It's 
sort of the cradle of life between the Bering Sea and the Gulf of Alaska. It's where like 12% of the world's protein is harvested. Oh, Jesus. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, that little spinner, you kook. Beautiful. It's a great place to be fishing because we have the numbers of fish still. It's not like you're trying to pick off the last of the buffalo. There's huge biomass of fish. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Yeah, right kind on the wrong rod. <laughs> Let me get it piece there. So when we're there fishing for halibut, we're fishing on a reef that's full of yellow-eyed rockfish, black rockfish, ling cod, and all those fish are there feeding on octopus and crab and capelin and herring. It's like, it's a ling cod. That's a cool looking fish, man. Oh, you never caught a ling with yeah, us? I never caught any of it. No, oh, we no. haven't been home. No, looks like a gargoyle. Oh, they look like a dragon. Look at that thing. Yeah, they're a predator. The dragon. No, they're eating live bait down there. They, I mean, they look like a predator, but they eat everything. Everything. You know, you got these huge ling cod, yeah. and it's, I mean, honestly, it's easy fishing. It's get on the spot, put the chum out, build the life up, and start catching fish. And if there's one thing you can depend on up here, the fish are gonna show. Starboard side. Oh, God. <laughs> that's the proper one. Well, take it easy. Just yeah. take it real easy. I think that's a good one. I think you got a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got a keeper on. Oh. Good thing you're using the right tool for the job. I'm running out of line. Someone bite. had to get it started. He's right. He got a real one on that little, little tiny fish. spinner. What am I missing out here? Now it stopped raining. Did you break it off? Spooled me. Yeah, it came up to the surface right when I hooked it. It came up 50 feet off the bottom over that way, and then I got it, it came back pretty easy, and then it took off and it was unstoppable. And generally, halibut just don't do that. They don't come back at you and then take off again. And there's pink salmon swimming around under the boat. It's highly likely that was a salmon shark. Still disheartening to get spooled, though. Local Knowledge is brought to you by Evinroot. Fastest, cleanest, smartest. The only outboard that lets you have it all. Pen. Let the battle begin. Yeti. Built for the wild. Sea Keeper. Once you feel it, you will never boat without it. The Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. Bubba. The ultimate lifestyle. Nomad Design. Crafted by experience and by BDOutdoors.com. I guess I don't think it's a how. You can take it out of the railing now, Cinderella. And the king of the rockfish up here, in my mind anyway, is that big nice. yellow eye rockfish. Yellow eye, nice. Yellow eye oh, very cool. Yeah, I told you they're that. awesome looking. No, it's super good eating, huh? That's they my are. favorite fish up here. Really? The bottom fishing here, like in so many yeah, places, awesome. uses the same fundamentals. You know, you're gonna have a bait and a weight to get down to the bottom. You're gonna want a little bit of current so the water's moving and kind of carry your chum and your scent to where the fish are at. You know, and then it's basically same as anywhere. Pay attention to that bite, make sure that they've got the bait, you know, and then either set them up or wind that circle hook into them. Holy smokes, I thought that thing was going to break the rod. I heard, it I heard it. I, didn't, I thought a rod went over the side. After all these years, Ollie, they're still here. <laughs> right where we left them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, is there any structure here they'll run you into or? Not generally, unless you had a really big one and a light drag, and then they could drag you into the reef, but it's not common. You don't really get rocked here like you do down in your neck of the woods. Well, this is a good fish. For those that don't know what a halibut is, I mean, everybody knows what one looks like, right? It's this big, flat fish. And I think when you've never caught one or don't know too much about them, you kind of assume it's a big stupid fish that just lays on the bottom waiting for something to come by. Yeah, it doesn't have the giant womps, but it's a good, I mean, it's heavy, it's a good one. The halibut is a true predator. It is a top of the food chain fish. It doesn't really have any natural predators except for maybe an orca lunch here and there. See? Oh yeah. Oh good yeah. Good one, huh? Yep, that's a good one. It's a big, mean fish that has giant teeth, pulls really hard, and then of course as an added bonus, they're delicious. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Hang on, I'm trying to control the weight. 
I always wanted to catch hal halibut. I've never caught anything that even closely resembles one. Two eyes on top of your head, your whole body's turned sideways. No, they're crazy. So cool. That's a good one to kick it off with, huh? Absolutely, that's a solid fish. They'll get up to 400 pounds or more. They caught a 405 pounder right outside the lodge where we're staying tonight. They're just an ambush predator, right? So they just are just off the bottom, cruising in the current like a wing. The average size charter halibut's about 20 pounds. All the big ones and all the little ones caught amongst a fleet of 1,200 boats, the average size is about 18 pounds. That one's about 68 pounds. So it's way over the average. I mean, the halibut is a relatively fast growing you know, they reach maturity at about 32 inches, which is about 20, 25 pounds. Such good meat too, right? Oh, there's, it's so good to eat. We How do you cook them? I like to bake it, just like any white fish, but you can't do it wrong. It's awesome fried. <sighs> so the thing about the bigger halibut that we were targeting on this trip and that we generally try to catch is they live in the rocks. They, that whole area where we fish is a giant rocky reef. <sighs> When we come here, our primary target is halibut, but I think one of the reasons why we like to target halibut, like any bottom fishing is, you just never know what you're gonna pull up. Oh, cool. Odd. China rockfish. Oh, look. Awesome. Yeah. China rockfish. China rockfish, they're pretty oh, rare. Wow. We don't see that. them that often here. They're really cool looking though. How many different variations of rockfish are there? There's like 200. Yeah. Look at that thing, though. And they'll, and they'll hybridize. God, so marbly. Yeah. They hybridize. Sometimes we find some weird ones that we don't really know what they are. In the case of Alaska, you could pull up a 300-pound halibut on one drop, a 50-pound lingcod on the next drop, and a 25-pound yellow-eye rockfish. Oh, look, he's got a hair crab down his throat, too. Never Check this out. That kind of variety and, honestly, good-eating fish that we get to take home makes this place unique and, and it just keeps bringing me back. Oh, there you go. Fish on. No, no it's oh, a big halibut. Fish. Yeah, fish on. If you want to tangle them, you could leave it out. That would be hysterical. I'm reeling mine up just so that I'm not the guy. I'm not that guy. But you guys I mean, work I've together been, a lot. I'm that guy plenty. Yeah, really you can easily matter. do that if you want to. I would not judge you. Andy is just a different kind of dude. Let's see. If I just throw this right over there, it'll. Now that I got everybody else out of the water. <laughs> and a guy that I love. I love that guy like a brother. He's a weird, quirky little guy, but he is a fish slaying mother. Thanks for it, Kali. Someone's got to catch them all. Nice job bringing Rush all the way here from Florida and then catching all the fish. That's pretty sweet. See how he does me? Man, from the first minute we came here, we were treated like family. Is he bigger than 18 pounds? He's bigger than he's bigger than the charter average. So when we're there fishing for halibut, we're fishing on a reef that's full of yellow-eyed rockfish, black rockfish, lingcod, and all those fish are there feeding on octopus and crab and capelin and herring. Might even be a rockfish, I don't know. Yeah, see how he continues to shake his head? Usually the rockfish, you know, as they're coming up, especially if they're coming up fast like this guy is, they, you know, they implode and then they're just yeah, kind of Yeah, it feels heavier than the rockfish. The yellow eyes will surprise you sometimes. I'll be stoked to catch a yellow eye. Howdy, but That one looks like a flounder. Oh, oh, oh perfect. perfect. I was going to say we You want to let him go or you want to kill him? We let him go. Good. The halibut is a very unique species of fish. There's very few fish, first of all, that have their eye, both their eyes on the same side. Uh, you're barely on the bottom. Give her a couple of cranks <laughs> up. He might be playing with it Who's on the bottom. You know? anyway. There we go. There. Oh, there, there we go. Is. There we go. Yeah. You got him again. There we got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. <sighs> Some species coming from East Coast to West Coast are exactly the same. You know, you have your groupers, your wahoos, you know, your billfish. Other species are night and day. This one's got a little more weight to it. Yeah, yeah, he does. Come on, big girl. Oh, he's taking some line there. Nice. Well, I think that the attraction to halibut, it's one thing is they're unusual. People don't generally think of a flounder to be getting to that size but also the range of size, and that's sort of the key with the tackle, where you want to have tackle that'll make catching a 25-pounder fun, but still be possible to stop a bigger fish. Got a leader. Got a leader. 
color. It's a nice one. Oh yeah. Real big one. I mean, there is nothing back home that I'm gonna catch that really equals a halibut. I mean, there's, there's nothing I'm gonna catch. There's nothing I'm gonna see. I've eaten it a couple times, delicious, but I wanted to personally catch a halibut. Local Knowledge is brought to you by CV Boats, Lead the Way, Costa, See What's Out There, Mustad, The Standard in Saltwater, Aftco, Any Fish, Any Water, Sea Deck, Your Boat Deserves Sea Deck, JL Audio, How We Play, Casa Vieja Lodge, Experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. The Saltwater Angler, Key West. And by Taco Marine. Uh, nah, it's not that big. Feels like a little guy. Another one of those 18-pounders. One of the biggest variables you're gonna have to combat when you're bottom fishing is usually gonna be current. I got a monster here. Charter average. Well, I think that's been our key to success, really, in, in our companies that occupy that office is we have figured out exactly where the water is moving in what direction and when, and we figured it out 20 years ago. And so we can make it so that we never run into a slack tide. And fishing in a slack tide is just a time when we never catch anything. No, that's a big fish. Starting to pull now? Yeah, no, it's a good one. Another thing about tide is it plays a huge part in catching these fish. Just like back home, we want water moving. Same thing here, they just have a lot more of it moving. So 100 plus? Um, it's hard to say, but yeah, I would, I would, if you, if I, I mean, if, if, you were, if I were a betting man, yeah, I'd say this one. Feels like he's swinging the boat. So crazy, all the life out Look here. Look at that, there's a big bull right there. There's so that all around this boat in different directions. What are they hunting? The, <laughs> salmon. Salmon. Uh, salmon. Primarily salmon. I see the bait. Uh, uh, that's a big one. I would say he's about a buck twenty. You guys are making me okay. so nervous. Three, two, one. <laughs> got him. Right. Yeah, you guys got him. Right. Oh, Good, job, got guys. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. Good job, guys. <laughs> He's doing the worm. The real talent in this fishery is not the guy holding the rod and reel. And actually, I'll say that about a lot of fisheries. You know, there's anglers and there's captains. And anglers turn the handle, captains do everything else. When they run up tide like this, that's usually the sign of a good one. This one definitely feels like a good one. Yeah. Nick and Andy have this fishery very dialed in. They've been fishing together for almost 20 years from two different boats, and I think they've each taught each other, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, of course, sharing intel. This one is very mad. It feels, this one feels heavy. This one my oh yeah, there you go. Um, He's all scarred up, huh? We don't need to keep that one. You guys I mean, it's about the it. same size. It's not that much bigger. You know, I think as long as, as guides, we explain and have some conservation ethic that it's fine to harvest fish that you're gonna eat. And yeah, some of those fish are old that we catch, but they're not, in any sort of a condition of being overfished or in any danger. That's a big breeding female. It's a good thing to let these go. And I think showing a little restraint, catching a few for dinner of the old ones, letting some of the bigger ones go, that totally makes sense and it's a good thing. Thanks, buddy. That was awesome, man. That was a good fish. Good one to let go to. Yep. Most of Alaska is day fishing trips. Good afternoon. And good afternoon to you too, Nick. We are on our way in here. Um, you want me on the inside dock? You know, a lot of lodges specialize in giving you a little boat and a few spots in the GPS and saying have at it. One of the elements that we didn't initially do when we were coming up here on these trips was the idea of having a remote lodge on tap. Andy and Nick have this unique uh, little spot called the Ashton Lodge. This beautiful lodge basically 60 miles away in the middle of nowhere that 
you can overnight at. We uh, put the lodge into service a couple years ago so that people can come and stay at the lodge and have a really comfortable place to stay where they don't have other people around them. They can have the wilderness experience out here but still have all the comforts of home. To give you somewhere to get off the boat, be able to cook a meal and overnight. You know, originally we spent time just sleeping on the boat in an anchorage or tied to a dock at a lodge. But the biggest benefit to the lodge is location. I mean, you're basically staying in a nice place right on the fishing grounds. You get a good night's sleep, you jump back on the boat, and guess what? You're still on the fishing grounds. It's a pretty awesome way to discover this place.